good afternoon from the Nature Conservancy, the Disney Wilderness Preserve. Mm -hmm. And we are about 45 minutes from Walt Disney World, but this is going to be a look at real Florida nature. Like we're going to see a lot of wild Florida. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm super excited. excited. Yeah. Yeah. We also brought like a little picnic lunch, so we're just going to hang out today. And, and the weather is beautiful today, so we picked the perfect day to come. Perfect day for a hike. Alright, so we parked out here in the parking lot, and we are walking up. There's lots and lots of parking. Looks like they're going to be adding in a couple of electric vehicle chargers too. And you can see here there's a sign out here that tells you the hours, and that you have to sign in. Tells you a couple of things that you might see around some deer, some tortoises, and some storks. They also say here that it is free admission, so that's pretty exciting. You don't usually see Disney and free in the same sentence. Right. So that's awesome. So there is a welcome center here, which is currently closed due to COVID, but if you were to go inside, you would be able to see photos from the opening, maybe some shells from turtles or tortoises that they found, some bones from animals that they found, feathers from different animals that you might be able to see, and just some more information about this area. Another cool thing out front is that they have examples of different flowers and plants that you might find around Florida. Like the blue porter weed. Oh, Jen ate some of the American beauty berry. Stop. And I ate some spider wart. <laughs> That's how we turned out like we are. Just kidding, we didn't eat any of that stuff. Don't eat stuff. Just off of the welcome center, they also have bathrooms, which I would highly suggest using before heading out on the trail because there are no bathrooms on the trail. Another interesting thing about this building is that they have all kinds of different energy efficient things in it. So it's got energy efficient roof, windows, solar power, and then they use cisterns and things like that as well. Geothermally cooled air conditioning. I did not know that that was a thing. Amazing. Oh, and then the first thing that you see as soon as you're heading out towards the trail is a native butterfly garden. No butterflies today, at least yet. Oh wait, uh, that might've been a wasp. All right, another thing that should be noted is that this is not any sort of supervised hike. So you're just like heading out into the woods. So you do have to sign in at the welcome center so that they know how many people are out on the trails during the day. All right, so we're headed out to the trails. So although the preserve is not affiliated with the Walt Disney Parks and Resorts, the Walt Disney Company did provide the funds for restoration and the wildlife monitoring that happens on the preserve. And they continue to partner in a number of the on-site projects. Disney's Wilderness Preserve stands as a testament not only to Disney's love of nature, but also to the power of cooperation, perseverance, and innovative thinking. So as we're walking down the start of the trail, there are these like observation, almost like little decks that look over this waterway. Oh, I heard something. Did you hear that, buddy? Do you see the water moving out there? Yeah. What did you see? What did you see something? It sounded kind of big. I wonder what it was. A fish or something. There's a bird straight out there. Like a cormorant or something? I can hear it, but I can't see it. All right, this is it, buddy. As soon as we step off this sidewalk, we're on the trail. You're doing it, you're hiking. <laughs> this is your very first hike. So before we set out, I did pick up a trail map and I memorized it thoroughly. <laughs> so now I know exactly where we're going. We're just taking a short, short little trip. I think it's only gonna be about a mile that we're gonna end up walking but there is a total of six miles of trail out here. So the preserve is home to more than a thousand species of plants and animals, and the preserve is an essential part of the Everglades ecosystem. It contains about 3,500 acres of restored wetlands, and that acts as nature's sponge, which captures rain, filtering out nutrients, and replenishing the groundwater. So preserves like this are an especially important part of Florida's ecosystem. So there are trail markers along the trail here and we're staying on the red trail. The white trail is extremely short. It's only about a half mile. Red trail is a little bit longer, but it leads out to a picnic area. And that's where we're headed to, picnic area on the water. Oh bud, are you excited? Yeah. Me too. You can see we've come to the fork in the road. To the right is the white trail and to the left is the red trail. So we are taking the red trail. So this is the shorter trail? Yeah, this one's only about a half mile long. Oh, okay. And we're gonna take the red trail out to the waterfront and a picnic area. So we actually met some people who were volunteering, which I think is really cool that they have volunteer opportunities here, but they were volunteering and they said that the property, it runs for like eight miles this way, I think he said. Yeah. So there's so much more to the property than just the trails, which I thought was really interesting. So one of the volunteers here actually gave us this sheet of paper for us to try to find some animal tracks and these are life-sized animal tracks so we're definitely gonna be on the lookout for skunks marsh rabbits oh what was that? a locust Ooh. 
feral hog. Oh, and deer, a wild turkey maybe. It is very nice that they have these markers out here letting us know that we're still, I mean, the trail is very easy to see, but it's nice to know that like, we're still on the correct trail, <laughs> seeing the correct markers and things like that. It's interesting being out here because if we listen very carefully, we can hear all kinds of different bugs and animals and then the wind pulling through the trees too. Ooh, yeah. And you hear it from far away and then we get a nice big wind gust. What'd you find, buddy? A pine cone. Whoa! <laughs> very cool. Should we leave it here for the squirrels? Nah, the no. Acorns. The acorns. Oh, the acorns are for the squirrels. Yep. Squirrels eat this too, but we just haven't told you that yet. So what, let's set it down right here so that the squirrel. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> yeah, those squirrels are gonna eat it. This is some form of animal poop right here. Oh, is it? Yeah, all kinds of fur in it, so it's some form of, of like carnivorous animal. Whoa. Yeah, gross, right? That is gross. What do you think it is? Either a coyote or a bobcat maybe? No. Yeah. So we are here, we've barely even started and we're trying to get to here. So we've got a little ways to go. I hope we can make it. <laughs> <laughs> we are 0.1 miles from the parking lot. We just heard something moving in these bushes over here. I feel like the most abundant animal out here is probably squirrels. Yeah. <laughs> so most likely, like it's, it's, we're probably not gonna see any animals. You never know, we'll see birds. I can hear turkeys right now, very far away. Or no, sandhill cranes. I can hear sandhill cranes very far away, but I don't know if we're actually gonna see anything. You never know though, we'll keep our eyes out. So something interesting that I wanted to talk about is when we were driving in, we saw some like burnt areas of the ground, which is where they did some prescribed fires. So we actually meant to come about two weeks ago. We had planned a trip to come out here and it was closed because they were doing a prescribed burn. So the prescribed burns are important because it helps to minimize fires that would happen naturally, like that would occur naturally in nature, mostly by like lightning strikes. Right. So this is a way to control the, like the damage from the fire. All right, so we've come across a couple of other signs. This is, says the exit, so you could do like a half loop on this red trail and turn around and head back this way. Or you could do this and head towards Lake Russell, which is what we're trying to do. So we're here. Yeah, not too much further. We're trying to go out there. So compared to where we started, yeah, I feel like we've got maybe like another 15 minutes until we're there. I like that these look like the wilderness explorer things. I think uh, the other way around. Oh, that looks like this? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> There's also a plane flying over top of us here. Yeah. Oh, what look, Jackson. See? Do you see? These are wildlife prints right here. <gasps> Those look like coyote prints. Are they? Yeah, it kind of like, like, looks like a dog. Ooh. Right? Or deer, because there's only three of them. Where's my, where's my sheet? Let's see. You just ruined them for me, buddy? You, you, you. Okay, so it's not a hog. Not a deer. Yeah. Ooh, I think Looks it... like it could either be bobcat or coyote. One of those two. Whoa. Okay. Well, then we've got another pile of poop over here, too. Oh my gosh. Yeah, lots of poop today. This is like that scene from Monty Python in the Quest for the Holy Grail. Did you make it? You did it. Ooh, I see a structure in the distance. I think that could be a good sign. All right, this is it. Lake Russell. That way. I was trying to remember the last time we were here if we went out to the lake, and I think we might have. Like this looks very familiar. So we're gonna head that way. I don't think it's very far because you can kind of see the tree line. Usually there's a big tree line around lakes and then opens up. So I can kind of see a clearing through it. I just wanted to look over here really quick and see what this thing is. What do you think it is? I think it's just benches maybe. Oh, you know what this might be? This might be like a wildlife blind. So you would say you like hang out in here and look out on the water out there do some like maybe bird photography because we can see a great blue heron out there it's focusing on yeah great blue heron out there there's like a white heron out there so I think that's what this is this is specifically designed for you to stay hidden from the wildlife with the opportunity to see more wildlife because oh. they won't know that you're here or they won't see you buddy this is the biggest pine cone I've ever seen you find. That's a pine cone. How it tall is, a pine is it? Cone. Jackson has requested a picnic right here. You want to eat your picnic, Jackson? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so we'll have a picnic right here and then maybe go out to the waterfront. We'll see how Jackson feels. So for lunch, we're having some turkey wraps, some carrots. Jackson has a little peanut butter and jelly sandwich that he's eating. And we brought some hummus. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. And then we also have some uh, 
some olives for Jackson because he loves olives. And mm -hmm. then I brought some pistachios because I love pistachios. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're pretty nice. Yeah. Oh, there's a little butterfly. Oh. You see the butterfly, buddy? A little butterfly. Oh, it's flying. Oh, yeah, there flying. it is. What is it doing? That's doing the butterfly stuff. So now that we're all done with lunch, we are headed down towards the waterfront. We're all refueled, ready to go. As you can see, we are headed into the woods. And that should just like be a quick short jaunt through the woods and then we'll be outside near a lake. Near Lake Russell, right, buddy? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Got some evidence of hogs over here. Yeah, that's what all this like like messed up land over here is that's from hogs rooting around see that kind of like worries me because hogs are yeah hogs dangerous. hogs are dangerous yep more hogs i can hear motorboats out here or something so i think that we are i can see the water right now so it's not very far at all Ooh. There is a sign here that says that alligators are common in this area. Do not approach them. Definitely don't feed them. And then here's another sign that talks a little bit more about this lake and tells us where we are. So this is Lake Russell. And here's another sign that says caution venomous snakes in the area. There's also a picnic table here. This is where we wanted to come and have lunch, but Jackson was just too hungry. So we stopped at the wildlife viewing area and had lunch there. What do you see, bud? He's stepping on a cypress knob. Whoa, oh, buddy. That was a big jump. So fun fact about the water. The reason that it's brown is from tannins in the leaves around. So mostly oak trees cause it to be like this, cypress trees, things like that. But basically the reason that it's it's brown is the same reason that tea turns brown. So when you steep tea, the things that make it turn brown is the tannins in the tea leaves. Same thing about this water here on this lake. So it's completely normal, completely natural. Really doesn't get much more Florida than this. It is beautiful out here. This is Lake Russell. It is gigantic as well. And I can't see any houses or anything out here. So I think that this is an undisturbed lake. I'll have to look at the overhead view, but I'm not seeing anything. I'm not seeing any houses or any anything else. There's no boats out here. I think what I was hearing was an airplane on the way out here. So this is just natural Florida. Okay, so on the website it says that Lake Russell is a 450 acre sand bottom lake. It's undeveloped. Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah, and it can be visited by hiking the Red Trail, which is the trail that we're on. Reedy Creek flows into this lake um, but the water continues to flow south through several other lakes. So this is like a chain of lakes. This lake, oh, and it leads all the way to the Everglades. Yeah. Wow. That's a pretty common thing for Florida lakes is to lead to the Everglades. Yeah. I just so didn't like realize the, how, how it connected they were. Yeah. Wow. So like St. John's River leads all the way down to the Everglades, you know. That's so interesting. Um, it also says that the water appears dark and even black sometimes because it's naturally stained by the decaying organic matter. This is totally health healthy and not harmful in any way. Yeah. Yeah, so it's the decaying organic matter which causes it to look this color. Pretty interesting. Yeah. I think that probably helps the alligators hunt yeah, for whatever they're looking for. There, if there are any in here, there's, we could not see them. Yeah, so because it is winter time, they might be down at the bottom, kind of like trying to conserve energy. And most alligators don't eat in the winter time anyways, because they need to use that energy to stay warm on the cold days. And so if there happens to be a cold day coming tomorrow, they don't want to eat a big meal today and use all their energy digesting that meal. They want to have that energy to stay warm.
So as we're walking around through nature, mm-hmm. you have you have questions. Well, we right? we just saw a bunch of butterflies, and they were just flying around together. They were little tiny yellow butterflies, and so Jackson said they're sleeping, and I was like, do butterflies sleep? I've never I've never thought of that question, and I, right. I definitely don't have an answer for it. So we Googled it, and it says that they do sleep. They're active during the day, so at night they find a hiding place and they go to sleep. Huh. In the same way that moths are active at night, and during the day moths hide and rest, butterflies are the opposite, so they sleep at night and they're active during the day. Interesting. So, I, yeah. <laughs> there it is. How now can you, know. you tell? So, Next time you're on Jeopardy, right. and you're wondering... <laughs> do butterflies sleep? But it says, how can you tell if a butterfly is sleeping? I think just oh, don't mess with butterflies. So now there's some, some there's some conflicting reports. This Ooh. says that they don't actually sleep. What? That they just rest. Okay. They become quiescent. Okay. And they rest with their eyes open. Okay. Wow. Interesting. So they usually do it hanging upside down, hidden in the foliage. Is that because they don't have eyelids though? Do, do butterflies have eyelids? I don't think so. Let's look it up. Here's what I'm thinking. There's so much wide open space out stretched in front of me. There has to be something out there. There's like deer out there, pigs, or hogs, bobcats, coyotes. Well, we know for sure that there's something because we saw so much poop I know. and footprints. Ooh. Animal tracks. Oh yeah. So this makes something. me want ice cream. <laughs> Some moose tracks. Okay. All right, so we're back to a, like a T in the trail. And you can see there's a sign here that says trail exit. And I think that's because it's a little bit shorter of a path. So the way that we came out was this way and we're gonna go back this way. So it's kind of like we're doing a loop, but this one seems shorter than this one, you know? So because we're going this way back, it is a new trail. We haven't been down this trail yet. So maybe we'll see something new. Maybe less poop, hopefully. (laughs) You never know. We are headed back. We're headed back this way. So if you see through the trees, you can kind of see a little building peeking through. That's where we're headed to. We're almost there. We did happen to see some more poop as well, just right on the uh, path here. And what I wanted to mention is that this is not a pet friendly park. So I I thought, oh, maybe it was somebody's dog or something, but it definitely isn't. So we could have encountered a coyote today and not even known it. I did also want to mention, sometimes people ask us, they say, what should I bring for clothes on my trip to Florida? And I want you guys to remember that less than a week ago, we were out buying winter clothes because it was so cold here. And now look at the and sweat pouring off I'm of your neck. Sweating. Yeah. The weather is definitely pretty unpredictable. Here's another look at that prescribed burn. So although it doesn't look very beautiful right now, it's definitely important to the ecosystem out here to do these. So there's also certain seeds for different plants that require a burn in order to release. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, look at this big bird. Yeah, turkey buzzard. Is that what it is? Is something yeah. dead out here? Maybe. There's a bunch of them. Uh-oh. Oh, oh like yeah. The wind, Look at that. They're huge. Wow. He's going in for something. Oh, wow. Yeah, there's four of them out here. Watch out. Bye, buddy. It is interesting just being out here in the middle of all of this, like, palmettos. Just, like, wide open space. It's not something you see very often like an undeveloped big patch of land. Yeah. Yeah. Hello. Hi. <laughs> All right, we made it back. Nice work, buddy. You did it. Also wanted to point out that there is like a nice little shaded area here with some rocking chairs on the way out. In the rocking chairs? Yeah, we actually saw somebody taking a nap out here. Yeah. It looked very peaceful. Just overlooking the water here. You could be like this little baby, relaxing. <laughs> and rocking. We're back at the Welcome Center and there's a painting here, like a photo of all the different animals you might see here. So you see a bobcat, some turkeys over here, scrub jay, a tortoise down there, there's an otter, some sandhill cranes, a deer, an alligator, a heron, storks, and then hawks up there too. Over here they like give you a little like key to see what the different areas of the forest and the wetlands and stuff like that are called. And I found my country music name. Just call me Scrubby Flatwoods. (laughs) So there you have it. That was our trip out to the Nature Conservancy, the Disney Wilderness Preserve. Mm -hmm. 
it was awesome. Like I really enjoy this sort of day where you just come out and we're just like hiking through natural Florida. So the last time we came um, was actually right before our trip to Japan, which was I think like three or four years ago now. Right, yeah. I'll link that video down below in case you want to see if there's any other interesting things that we said in that one. But I will say that as much as theme parks and things are, are important to Florida, and of course they're a lot of fun to go to, I think seeing Florida's natural beauty is just as important. I think it's really cool that the preserve is just promoting conservation and also kind of educating you in ways that you can do things that are better for not only Florida's ecosystem, but just for the environment in general. Yeah. Yeah. And so. It's also neat to see like how the different areas are very important to our natural ecosystem. I do I do wish that we had gotten to see more animals and we, we, we did see a lot of evidence of animals through the tracks and the poop, but I wish we had seen more actual animals. Right. So we'll have to come back again. Yeah, <laughs> I think so. I think if we come like early in the morning or just before sunset, this park does close at 4.30, so I don't know if you would be able to get there just before sunset, yeah. but I think we'd be able to see more animals out and about. Definitely. I also wanted to mention too that we've been planning on coming here for a couple of weeks now and I would just, if you're coming out here, I would suggest that you check out the website to make sure that they're not closed for like an unscheduled burn or for um, just their days that they're closed. Right. Because we, we definitely would have driven all the way out here and it would have been closed had we not looked at their website. Right. And just as an FYI, they are closed on Mondays and Tuesdays. Mm -hmm. So, all in all, a fantastic trip out here. And with that being said, we are off. We'll see you all tomorrow. My name is Phoenix and I'm from Pennsylvania. And now it's time to pay the price.